if so many pre-built PC companies have cases that are designed poorly for airflow, how bad can it really be? Today, we're gonna find that out together. So when you get down to it, the real heart of the question is, how much performance do you lose by having poor case airflow? And we're going to test this scientifically. First, we're gonna start with a control. And here is my control, my tried and true open air test bench. I'm using this as my control because the CPU and GPU are open to the air, which means they should be constantly pulling in fresh room temperature air into their coolers. So in theory, this setup should provide the absolute best possible performance for my PC. In the long run, that may not be totally true because you'll end up with a lot of dust and dirt all over your computer. And while it's easier to clean, you're gonna have to clean it more often. However, for the sake of short-term performance, this is the way to go. Now to understand what the baseline performance is, we're gonna run a few tests and then we're gonna run those same tests for every different configuration. First, we'll use Cinebench for the CPU tests, Furmark for the GPU, a combination of the CPU and GPU tests at the same time, and then we'll run a couple of in-game benchmarks for a little more dynamic real-world testing. So let's see what this system can do. Well, now that the baseline test is completed, it's time to go to the opposite side of the spectrum. Similar to what you might find in a cheap pre-built like this one, I'm going to block off the majority of the airflow in my old gaming PC case, which is what this test bench used to be, and we're gonna test out just how much that affects our performance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rebuild the test bench into my old gaming PC case, which is a Fantex P500A. Then we're gonna block off the majority of the front open area as well as the top open area. We'll test out how well that does without any additional fans, just the ones that come with the CPU cooler and the GPU. So now the fun part of rebuilding my old gaming computer. Let's just cut past that part. Three hours later. Okay, now that I rebuilt this into my old case, in just 13 minutes by the way, we're gonna cover up a bunch of the intake and the exhaust area so we can simulate a case with really bad airflow. And I haven't plugged in any of the fans, so we're almost ready to move on to test number two. All right, so there's no case fans plugged in. We only are gonna have airflow moving from our CPU cooler fan and the GPU fans. This rear fan and the top fans are not plugged in at all, and there's not even any fans mounted up front. So let's see how this compares to our open air test bench. Okay, we've completed that test and we've seen the results. Now we're gonna see what it looks like with a low airflow case, but with proper fans. So we're gonna put two fans on the intake, one on the exhaust, and we're gonna see just how much of a difference that makes in terms of the amount of heat being trapped in the case and the performance overall. You can see now that we have two front intake fans and an exhaust fan. So let's put our restrictive front panel back on, put our other side panels back on, and we'll go to test number three. All right, so I finally completed all of the tests, Cinebench, Furmark, Cinebench plus Furmark, and Call of Duty. I couldn't be bothered to download any other games to test, but I got all those completed for all four test cases. So let's walk through them again one more time. First, we have the open air test bench, which we're gonna use as our control because essentially it's getting clean, fresh air, eh, cleanish, fresh air all the time. Second one was in a very restricted airflow case with no case fans whatsoever. Third test case, same exact case with restricted airflow, but we had two intake fans and one exhaust fan. And the final test was opening up the front and top panels of the case and essentially simulating just having a good case with a couple of fans. So my editor is gonna put up these tables as I talk through them. And first one up is the Cinebench test. And as you can see here, there really wasn't much difference between any of these test cases. My theory is that there's not enough heat being generated overall to heat soak all of the air in the case. It was able to evacuate the heat out of the back of the case without too much problem. Moving on to the Furmark test, which is for the GPU. We saw fairly similar results here as well. You can see that the closed off case without fans 
increased the temperature quite a bit, as well as the closed off case with fans was also significantly higher than the open air bench or the regular case with fans, but it didn't affect the average FPS very much at all. Moving on to the more telling test here, this is running Cinebench for 20 minutes plus Furmark for 20 minutes, which means the CPU and GPU are both at 100% load and absolute max power draw. In the open air bench test, you can see that the CPU is pulling about 208 watts and the GPU is pulling 255 watts with the CPU averaging about 82 degrees C and the GPU finishing at a 77 degrees C average. Here's where you start to see a really big difference in performance. While running the CPU and GPU full bore for 20 minutes, CPU was getting so hot that it was only pulling 120 watts by the end of the Cinebench run, and it averaged 95 degrees C. This really brought down the Cinebench score. The GPU was still pulling essentially the full power and had a very similar average FPS of 184 versus 188, but it was 10 degrees C warmer than the open air bench test. Looking at the third test here, you can see that the closed off case with fans made a big difference compared to the closed off case without fans. It is still noticeably warmer both for the CPU and GPU than the open air bench test. Moving to the fourth test, you can see that the temperatures for both the CPU and GPU were almost identical to the open air test bench. This means that we had good enough airflow to pull fresh air through that it basically acted exactly the same as if it was just an open air test bench. That's the power of having a good case. Let's move on to the Call of Duty test. On all four of these tests, we played for about 10 minutes, which was one short private match with bots. You can see that the closed off case, whether it had fans or not, was a little bit higher in temperature, but the FPS was not really affected. However, when you look at this next slide, I re-ran the test with a much longer game that was over 20 minutes, and the closed off case without any fans got significantly warmer. So that 10 minute test really wasn't enough to heat soak it. You can see after 20 minutes, it got significantly warmer. The average FPS dropped by 20 FPS, and it's possible that it could have gotten even worse. So in conclusion, what I've been preaching for four years is not wrong. You should definitely make sure that your case has good airflow because you can have it perform just as well as an open air test bench while filtering out a bunch of that dust, which makes it last longer and you don't have to clean it as often. If you see a company try to sell a high-end PC with a low airflow case, don't trust it. You're going to lose out on performance. And by having higher temperatures on your CPU, GPU, and other components, you can significantly lower the life of your PC. After all that testing, I really feel vindicated. I was a little bit worried that maybe the temps and the performance wouldn't be very significant, but they were. So make sure you pay attention when you buy your next PC. Hope that helps.